Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to be sharing some tips and techniques on how to use pan pastels for drawing a natural background. This full length tutorial of the lion cub and of course the background is now available on my Patreon channel as a full length tutorial. You get the reference photo, line art and full material list. So with a natural background like this that's got a little bit more going on than a simple one colour background or a bokeh background, my first aim is to map in my reference points. Now my reference points on this are the sticks here that are going to be out of focus. I am going to really soften the edges, but I wanted to make sure that I drew those in first, mapped them in so that I knew they were in the general area, and now all I have to do is fill in the blank spaces in between. Although it doesn't matter exactly where these sticks are, because of course it's natural they could have been placed anywhere, I do want to make sure that they are accurate to my layout. The only reason being then the rest of the background is going to be a lot easier to tackle because I know exactly what I'm looking at on that one section of that reference photo. And this again is something that I do throughout any subject. So when I came to working on the line cub's face, there are many reference points that I've picked out such as the darker markings on the face. Once I know that they are mapped in and they are accurate, the rest is a bit easier to fill in. So that would be my first tip for any kind of natural background. If you've got a particular section of colour or a branch, a stick, if you put that in first, you know that that's accurate and in the right place, the rest of that background is going to become far less daunting. So for this background with the tool that I'm using, I decided to use the round shaped soft tool. Now this is one of my favourites along with the oval shaped because it's got the curved tip. I personally don't like the square or the triangular shape because you do end up getting harsher start and stop points. Now you can see here that I'm able to get a really nice mottled effect very easily and quickly because it does have that rounded edge. So for this type of background with anything that's out of focus, those would be my preference. Now as you can see from the finished photo of my drawing in the corner, I haven't started off with my darkest colours first. I'm gradually building up my contrast and in a moment once I've got the top section of the background in place I'm going to go back in with my darker browns and then reinforce that even more. I find when working with pan pastels this is my preference because I don't want to run the risk of going too dark, trying then lightening it back up and then ending up with muddy layers. Now I did use my black pan pastel on top to reinforce my contrast and again this is one of those things I want to leave till my last layers so that I avoid that muddying up of those layers. This is something that can happen very quickly and easily with pastels especially when using a black. So because I wanted to make sure that a lot of these natural brown tones showed through I was a little bit more careful with how I layered the black on top. So when it comes to how much you should blend a background, that's going to depend on the effect that you want to create. So in the corner here where you do see my finished drawing, if you want that to be even more softer so that it looks like it's further in the distance, just apply extra pastel and then blend that out even more. The more pastel you apply and fill up the tooth of the paper gradually, which is really important, it should be gradually, the softer your effect is going to be because you've got more layers of pastel that you can blend. Now if you want that background more in focus, you need to ease off on that blending technique and leave a little bit more of your crisper edges. That is going to of course depend on the reference photo and the effect that you're going for. For this I wanted something that was a little bit in between. I knew that I was going to put a little bit of the sand and stony texture around the line cub's paws, but I did want the rest of the background to be really soft. Now the reference photo that's supplied with the full length tutorial on Patreon, I have pretty much copied that exactly. I've hyped up my contrast slightly but I have used the same background. This was a really nice background, it worked perfectly so in this case I didn't feel the need to change it. Here this is where I'm hyping up that contrast and using a mixture of my black pan pastel and a darker brown just to reinforce some of my shadows. The one thing you'll notice though is I'm being really careful with where I'm placing them. I'm not putting them everywhere. One thing what happens by darkening the background is you will make the subject stand out even more. Especially because the Lion Cub has really beautiful lighting on that fur, I knew that my colours, a mixture of pinks, yellows and creams, were going to make this Lion Cub really stand out from the background. So by darkening up a few little shadowed areas there, it was going to help to build up that effect even more. So when it came to working on the lower part of the background, I'm using a slightly different technique. 
I've switched over to my oval shaped soft tool just mainly because I'd already got a sponge there that had a greyer colour on it so it just meant I wasn't using another new one fresh from the packet. Now this is something that I will always do, I'll keep my sponges in colour order so that if I then use another grey in another portrait I can just switch back over to that sponge. Now I do find that this is my preference because I don't have to clean them off in between colour changes and I find then that that actually makes the sponges last a little bit longer. Now in terms of the technique, notice how I'm using this applicator from left to right, whereas the top part of the background it was more circular movements. The reason why this is the change in the tool position here is so that I can make it look like the ground is flat. If you're drawing a landscape scene where you've got more of a hilly terrain, you are going to have to follow the lay of the land. You're going to be making sure that you're curving those um, applicator strokes to follow that. But with this, the lion cub was sat upright, therefore I needed to make it look like the ground he was positioned on was also flat. So I wanted to make sure that I moved that applicator from left to right, more on that horizontal line. So before I show you one big mistake that I have done on this portrait, if the tips and techniques that I've shared with you so far have been useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up, and if you do want to get notified of future content, to hit that subscribe and that bell button. Okay, so onto this mistake. Now at the moment here, this is jumping out at me, but at the time of drawing it, I obviously just completely missed it. Now, on the line cub on the right hand side, if you look at my finished portrait in the corner, he should have a back leg that's very similar to what the left side of the body looks like. I have missed that out completely. Now I still don't know, even right now, how I managed to miss that out because of course I was looking at my reference photo, but it does just happen, it's one of those mistakes, any little mistake with pastels at the time can feel really big, even as big as leaving out an entire limb. What's important though is knowing how to fix it. Now in my Patreon tutorials, I never ever leave out mistakes. There are no secrets. If I do make a mistake, I will show in that tutorial how to fix it because this is an important part of the learning process. What's important is knowing how to fix those mistakes so that if something like this happens in another portrait, I won't get that sick sinking feeling in my stomach thinking, how am I gonna fix this? Am I gonna have to start this portrait again? Now, when I fixed this, and I have, as you can see from the drawing in the corner there, it's completely fine. You wouldn't know that the background has been drawn all the way up to that front leg. But I did have to make sure that I followed very specific layering processes by removing the background, putting in my sketch line again to make sure that the leg was accurate, then applying more pan pastel on top, while always making sure that I never filled the tooth of the paper. The reason being, I knew that I had to layer lots of detail on top of that back leg so that I could still get that fur looking realistic. If I'd accidentally have filled the tooth of the paper by trying to fix this mistake, I wouldn't be able to do that. Fill in the tooth of the paper, you'll know when it happens because it feels like your pencils are gliding over the top, like the pigment is not able to stick. And that just is an indication that there's too much pastel on that surface, there isn't any tooth of the paper remaining. So if you would like to see how to fix mistakes like this whilst making sure that you preserve the teeth of the paper, this is available now on Patreon as that full length tutorial. So I will make sure that my Patreon channel is linked in the description below. So I wanted to break up a little bit of those browner colours so I decided to add some few shades of green here just to add a little bit of extra colour. Now when I'm doing this I'm using a smaller applicator because I didn't want these greens to overwhelm the natural look of the background. It was just enough here as I've said just to break that up. So I really hope the tips and techniques that I've shared in this video were useful. If they were I'd really appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference. And if you would like to get notified of the tutorials that I upload here then hit the subscribe and the bell button. So here is a photo of my finished drawing and this is what's available on Patreon as a full length tutorial. As I said at the beginning of the video, you do get the reference photo, line art and full material list, all of the pan pastels, all of the pencils and the supplies that I've used to create this really cute line cub. So as always, thank you so much for watching and if you've got any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below.